Hello there and welcome back to Gumboots Australia. This is mission number 21 called the Cyclone Tapes. And the instruction text reads, A local newspaper is going to do a series of articles on recent cyclones. They want you to travel to six locations in Australia hit by a cyclone since 1970 and interview people about the impact of the cyclones upon the community. You are given an advance of $800 from a total fee of $2,000 and you must complete the assignment by November 25. That's only 13 days. Wow, okay. Six interviews. Of Cyclone. How about we just search Cyclones? Alright, so Cyclone Ada. Hit the Barrier Reef. So, could be Tans where I am now. Cyclone Althea. Hit Tansville. 71. Uh, Cyclone Kathy hit the Gulf of Carpentaria. Carpentaria. That was in 84. Cyclone Hazel in Carnarvon in 1979. Cyclone Tracy, that's the big one. That hit Darwin. In 1974. 50 people killed and 17 lost at sea. Wow. Uh, Cyclone Wanda. Brisbane in 74. Darwin. Okay, so there's our six places. Um, so we've got Townsville, we got Darwin, and we got Brisbane. So then to find Carnarvon, the Gulf of Carpentaria, and the Barrier Reef. I think the Barrier Reef's going to be South Mole Island. I reckon Gulf of Carpentaria will be Wiper. Maybe Normanton. And Carnarvon, though, where's Carnarvon? Oh, Carnivan is Monkey Mia, right. So that's a bit further out. Okay. Um. Barrier Reef. It's Townsville. I've already got Townsville, though. And this is more interviews in like more than one interview in the one place. All right, we're in Tansville now. Let's investigate. Let's uh, ring the tourist bureau. No material for interviews here. No one seems to remember anything about cyclones. Hmm. You can check out the local university. A social scientist at the university did a study of the effects of cyclone Althea in 1971. She proves to be a perfect person to interview, and you deliver the tape of the interview to the editor of the newspaper. Okay, so that's one down. Uh, how about we visit the local rainforests? No luck here. You can see the Barrier Reef Wonderland. Bad luck, you don't find any people who can help you here. Keep trying. Well, that's one down. He's in Townsville. I reckon South Malt Island might be a go. I gotta go down. I gotta play up and down, so it's a little bit annoying. Um, maybe you jump down to Brisbane first and work way back up. So we go to a new place, let's go to Brisbane. Uh, I'll just grab a car. It's almost night time already. Brisbane is the capital city of Queensland, the site of Expo 88. One of its best known buildings is City Hall, which hasn't been torn down by developers. I only got 13 days for this mission, so I probably need to take a few more cars and planes. But I arrive in Brisbane right in the morning, perfect timing, let's investigate. What if we inspect the old expo site? No material for interviews here. No one seems to remember anything about cyclones. What if you see Lone Pine Sanctuary? One of the workers at the sanctuary is an amateur historian 
who was in Brisbane when Cyclone Wanda struck in 1974. She gives you a vivid account of the effects of the cyclone upon Brisbane people. Okay. And there's the Brisbane one found. Great Barrier Reef. Would Bundaberg technically fall into that? This is Search Bundaberg. Um, Fraser Island. There's no mention of it. I'm going to skip it. I'm going to go to South Mole Island. There we go. Uh, South Mole Island is a holiday resort situated in the heart of the Whitsunday Passage, 8 kilometers from Chute Harbour. Sounds promising. I'm going to actually get a plane there. Get some work done before nightfall. Let's investigate. Let's place a bet on the toad race. You meet someone who gives you the name of a marlin fisherman who is a local cyclone watcher. You lose 25 bucks on the races. Okay. Let's go fishing for marlin. On the way out to the fishing grounds, you record a fascinating interview with the fisherman who kept extensive records on Cyclone Ada in 1970. Okay. Is that one done? This is going pretty well. Now, the Gulf of Carpentaria. Carpentaria? Carpentaria? That's the Gulf there. So it could be Normanton or Wiper. I'm going to try Wiper first. Not that I've been to Normanton much, so maybe it could be an option. Um. Wiper is near the tip of Cape York in Queensland, the site of the biggest bauxite mine in the world, and probably some of the biggest trucks too. Let's go by car again. Make use of that downtime at night. In hindsight, I should have actually... Oh no, it's 12.30, that's worked out well. Alright, we're here, let's investigate. Let's uh, take a fishing trip in the Gulf. No luck here. What if we talk to local police? Bad luck. You don't find any people who can help you here. What if you hitch a ride in a truck? No material for interviews here. Hmm. What if you go inspect the mine? No luck here. Okay. This place has been a bust. Alright, let's try Normanton then. Uh, Normanton, small town in the southwest of the Cape York area, known for its unusual old railway service, the Golflander, which has been in service since 1891. I'm just going to get the bus and arrive first thing in the morning. Bit of a snoozer before we get up. Alright, let's uh, investigate here. Let's look at the purple pub. Bad luck, you don't find any people who can help you here. What if we see the old Qantas terminal? No material for interviews here. What if we travel on the Golflander? No luck here. What if we walk along Lansborough Street? Okay, there we go. You drop into some of the local shops. In one of them, you discover that the owner was one of six people caught out on a fishing trip by Cyclone Cathy in 1984. You record a detailed description of how they survived eight days in the bush before being rescued. Okay. So that's the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria one done. Let's go to a new place. Let's head up to Darwin. The site of probably Australia's most famous or infamous cyclone, that's for sure. Darwin, the territory's capital, hit by Cyclone Tracy in 1974 and since rebuilt. The residence of the administrator is one of the few buildings which survived the wartime bombing and the cyclone. It's about 10 days. So I'm happy to get a bus. Which I'll get the car and hope I can find them before the day is over. And I do have plenty of cash. Alright, it's 11.20 in the morning. Good work. Let's investigate Darwin. What if you see the Beaufort Darwin Centre? Bad luck, you don't find people who can help you here. What if we take a boat to Melville Island? On Melville Island, you find an elderly couple who were living in Darwin when Cyclone Tracy arrived in 1974. They eagerly provide you with an unusual insight into the devastation caused by Australia's worst ever cyclone. Okay, there's Darwin done. Last stop is Cape Carnarvon or Monkey Mia. It's going to be a long trip. 
but I've still got nine days, so Monkey Mia, in the clear blue waters of Shark Bay, this is the home of scores of friendly dolphins which regularly swim into the shallows to mingle with people near the beach. I'll take the bus, I'm in no rush really at all. 47 hours. Here I am, let's investigate. We'll travel up to Carnarvon. In Carnarvon, you were able to contact a member of one of the search parties that in 1979 attempted to locate the fisherman caught at sea by Cyclone Hazel. He proves to have a remarkable memory and you tape an absorbing account of the event. There we go, that was pretty easy. Great work Andy, you have six interviews. You should have been a journalist. The editor of the Townsville paper is delighted with the tapes and send you your $1,200 fee and promises to include your photo in the articles. You'll be famous. You receive your final payment of $1,200 for completing a task plus your $100 for each bonus point you have left. This adds $2,200 to your bankroll. You finish this game, you know, go on to the next game. Okay, that's number 21 done, the Cyclone tapes. Back above $20,000 in the bank. So it's all looking good. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your support. And I hope to see you next time for some more Gumboots Australia.